Pastor Axel welcomes you to Evangel World Outreach Center. Our weekly worship services are every Sunday at 12.15 p.m. located at 236 Washington Street, Boonton, New Jersey 07005. We are a small church with a big vision for northern New Jersey. Come be a part of our family. Today I want to speak on why we need the right perspective. Why do we need the right perspective? Your perspective and my perspective is maybe not the perspective we need. The perspective that we have can only be compared to what the Word of God tells us. If the Word of God tells us how to live our lives, what to do, that is what we base our perspective on. That is our guideline. Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, keep your eyes on yourself. No. If you keep your eyes on yourself, you're going to stumble. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. He makes it very easy. You can look up and say, thank you, Jesus, that can focus on you. He's the source and perfecter of our faith. You cannot live the Christian life. You cannot be a child of God without having Jesus at the center of your life. You can't do anything without the source. He's the source. He's the source to your healing. He's the source. The Bible says that Jesus took all our infirmities and all our sicknesses upon him. Hallelujah. That makes me understand. See, I don't make it complicated. I take it simple. If Jesus says he took my diseases and my sicknesses upon him, I don't have to carry them. I let him deal with it, amen. Because I know Jesus can deal with my sicknesses, with my diseases, much better than I can deal with it. So all I need to do is say, Jesus, I thank you for taking my diseases and my sickness that want to come in my body upon you. Because he's the source and perfecter of our faith. As long as we keep the center on Jesus, we got to move forward. As long as we keep our focus on Jesus, we can advance in the kingdom of God and we can be fine tuned. We can hear his voice better and better every day. And all of a sudden, we'll be so fine tuned that everything in our life just matters about Jesus. For who, for the joy that lay before him, endured the cross and despite the shame and had sat down at the right hand of God the throne, on God's throne. See, Jesus came because we, he knew, he knew that you could not live life on your own. He knew that you could not get to struggles on your own. He knew that when something comes to your life, the storm of life, that you could not master it. You could not get through it. You could not understand the reason why you go through it. Amen. But that's why he came, because he came to lift you up and carry you to the storm. He came to build your life in a foundation that's far greater than any wisdom on earth or knowledge on earth can ever give you. He came and He imparted His Spirit in you that He has somebody speaking to you at any given time, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, the Holy Spirit speaks to you in a very gentle voice. And thank God, God is gentle. Because if we would not be gentle, some of us would have bruises all around us. Because sometimes we need some slapping. Sometimes we need some adjusting. Amen. But God is gentle. He speaks to us in a gentle way. He wants us to acknowledge Him in everything we do. Look unto Jesus. Whatever you face in life, whatever you go through in life, whatever comes your way, if you look on Jesus, hallelujah. But you have to practice to look on Jesus because our flesh will not allow us to look on Jesus. Our flesh is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants to do in us. The Bible says the flesh, the Spirit is ready, the Spirit is always ready, but the flesh is always weak. How much easier it is to sit on the couch and watch TV to go on your knees and pray. Did you ever time yourself that look, this is a two-hour movie. I'm gonna spend two hours on my knees and pray. It's so much easier to watch a two-hour movie than two hours on your knees. Because your flesh tells you, well, it's too much. It's too much. I want to have it easy. No. I want to sit back. I want to be on my knees. And there's a battle within us. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, hallelujah. 
We will overcome every battle. We cannot be defeated. The Word of God tells us we cannot be defeated. Amen. Not because of who we are, but the one who lives in us is far greater than the one in the world. Amen. We are overcomers. We are more than victorious in all things. Victorious. What is the need of the right perspective? What perspective does God want us to have? He wants us to have the right perspective about people. People. People matter most to God. Your money doesn't matter to God. Your house doesn't matter to God. He doesn't care what you drive around. You know why he doesn't care? Because it belongs to him anyway. Everything, everything on earth belongs to him. The cows on the hill belongs to him. The 10,000 hills belong to him. Everything belongs to him. But what matters to him is people. People are what he loves. He doesn't love, he doesn't love anything on earth like he loves people. He loves people. We as a church have been praise people. No matter where they come from, no matter what they look like, no matter their background, no matter if they live in sin, no matter if they're Christian, it doesn't matter. God doesn't look at he doesn't, he doesn't love a sinner more than his children. The love of God is the same. We may be as parents. We, sometimes we may be as parents. We may love, love the kid more than the other, which should not ever, ever happen. Oh, we love people more than the other. But Jesus loved everybody the same. And that's what we have to grow. We have to understand. We have to love people. Regardless who they, what they look like. Regardless what they believe. They only believe sometimes because they've been brought up in their faith or beliefs they have. Amen. So we, see, love is something very powerful. One of the greatest power we have on earth is love. Because we see when Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Matthew 22 says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart. You cannot love people if you don't love God with all of your heart. Because when you love God with all of your heart, He imparts His love into your life. He lets you have the love of God just flow through you. And we need to love God with our heart, all of our soul, and all of our, all of our mind. God wants us complete. See, the devil is happy if he just gets a 1% of your thinking. A 1% of your life. He's very happy. He's content. If you put in this water just a drop of poison, who would drink the water? Nobody would drink it. Well, 99% is still good water. No, why? Because it's contaminated. The devil wants to put 1% in our bodies because he wants to contaminate us and give some access to our lives, give some legal rights to come into our lives and make things happen that we don't want to have in our lives. You know, when somebody does something coming to God's will, they open up their life, the door opens up, and one demon comes into life. And what do you think the, the one demon will do? He will invite his friends to come. And all of a sudden, people being so deep possessed, they don't know what to do anymore. That's why God wants us to love him with all of our heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. If you violate that commandment, we cannot fulfill the second commandment. Now I say, like, Lord, what hurts you, let it hurt me. What, what, what breaks your heart, let it break my heart. I really, I really mean it. If it hurts the Lord, I'd rather live with a broken heart and know that I can do God's will and do what He wants me to do and live a healthy life. Whatever the Lord, whatever hurts the Lord, Lord, let it hurt us. Amen. Because when we see how God feels, oh, He created this world, He created people, and yet the people that go against Him, but yet He still loves them. His love never changes. No matter what we do, He always will love us. And the greatest, the greatest pain that Jesus will endure when the great judgment day will come, we will be separated from eternal glory and go to hell evermore. And Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus is going to weep because He paid the price. He brought the solution. He made it right. And people did not listen to what He asked them to do. Verse 38 says, this is the first greatest commandment and the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Many lack faith in today's society, lack the right perspective of other people. How quick are we to point out the faults in another person's life? How quick are we to judge people? Oh, maybe you're not the person that, but you know, somebody driving down the road and somebody cuts you off and you have to hold you back. Because why? Because they offended you. And sometimes we want to say, just tell them how they should drive. I mean, we're not perfect. Now I'm not talking about my life, I'm talking about just in general. But we have to have the right perspective. My wife always tells me, behave in traffic in such a way where it could be a church member. If you yell at people on the street, they come to your church, they're going to say, oh, look at this pastor. He yelled at me on the street corner. He cut me off. So behave, behave the way that Jesus is going to represent himself in our lives. Some hold ill feelings and resentment, resentment. I don't understand. I don't understand how somebody cannot forgive somebody and carry unforgiveness their whole entire life into the grave. Some families, they have been so, but people hate the family so much that they let them talk to each other. And some of them on the deathbed, they make it right. What a waste of time. They could have had a wonderful life on earth and interact with people. And because of something, maybe misunderstand, maybe something that happened, they don't forgive. Resentment will cause bitterness in the person's life. That resentment and unforgiveness will take people into the grave. Oh, that unforgiveness will bring bitterness in their lives and because of the bitterness they will encounter sickness and things they should never have encountered. We have to understand. Don't depend on people. Don't depend on pastors. Don't depend on people. Because they will always, they can't disappoint you. Maybe they, they, there's always a reason for disappointment or maybe they're going to disappoint you. Maybe the doctor, you maybe have something good to doctor and the doctor doesn't give you what you want to hear. But I have good news for you today. That somebody, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He can depend on him in the midnight hour. He can depend on him at a given time. He can depend on him. He will never fail you. He will never forsake you. He will be always there for you. Even if you're ready, and even if you're running the end of the world. He will always be there for you. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Put your trust in Jesus. And let the Lord Jesus, let him be what he wants him, what he wants you to be in your life. God must be first in our lives. We should love others with appreciation. Love people. Just like Jesus loves them. It's not going to be easy all the time. I'm telling you the truth. But it is possible. It is possible to love everybody. And how is it possible? Because I can sing the song. Lord, change my heart. Change my heart continuously. When you get older, you say, God, Change my heart, amen. Because when you were younger, the heart was good. When it gets old, it gets worn out, but you can say, God, change my heart. You never know what God will do to your heart if you sing that song or if you give him a chance. You may sing a song, No, oh, Lord, change my heart, and all of a sudden you see a rumbling, you see something happening in your heart, and he creates a new heart. My mother in law, when she was here living with us, God healed her heart. The pacemaker she had stopped. Didn't work anymore. Then when I rushed to the hospital, I said, oh no, I'm not going to go to the hospital. I have my good old life here on earth. And God stopped the pacemaker because he gave her a new heart. Hallelujah. And she lived for 10 years afterwards. He, she, before she could move around, she couldn't, she couldn't move around with oxygen. All of a sudden, when God healed her heart, the oxygen came off. She started cooking again. She went down to the basement, washing her clothes. She went all over the place because God is a God who is faithful in them. He can always do what you expect Him to do for you. So we have to have the right perspective of people. We have to have the right perspective of problems. Problems will come. 
Problems come to everybody. It's just hard because we live in a sin environment world. The sin, the sin has come to this world, and because of the environment we're living in, problems will come. But the Bible says you may cry through the night, but praise God, joy is coming in the morning. You may go through the storm, but praise God, the storm is coming to an end. You may go through situations, but they have been limited by God a certain time. But when you come out, you're going to come out more beautiful. You're going to be, you come out more powerful. You're going to be tested while you go to storm. But when you come out, your mind is transformed. Your attitude has been changed. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's have the right attitude towards problem. In First Peter 5, 7, it says, Can't give all your worries. So when you come to church, you come to the altar. So when you come to the altar, but when you come to church, bring, bring your problems to church. I always say, if you're sick, the worst thing you can do is stay home. When you're sick, bring it to the church. Hallelujah. You tell the Lord, God, I'm going to church today. Not thank you, Jesus, because whatever it is in my life, whatever problems in my life, whatever sickness wants to come in my life, I lay it to you before you at the altar. I bring it to your house and you walk out and don't take it back home. Cast your cares, cast your burdens, cast your worries, anxieties. Care, carry it to the Lord. Cast on Him, cast it. Whoever, whoever threw a rock into the water, you don't go and fish out the rock you threw in the water in the lake. No, you cast it in the lake. You leave it there. But we sometimes have the understanding or the attitude we bring before the Lord. And we pray for three years about a problem. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me with the situation. Oh, Lord Jesus, I don't know. Is it my cross to bear? You want the cross to bear? The cross to bear is just to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the cross to bear. Nothing else is a cross. And some people that go on for some, some people that go on for whole entire life say, Lord Jesus, help me, help me, help me. Oh God, you see how I feel. You see what I'm going through. And some people have never said that, that that's the cross they need to bear. Nonsense. God never glorifies himself in a cross to bear. God never glorifies himself in sickness. He glorifies himself through healing. He glorifies himself in the demonstration of his power. Amen. Oh, what I have to do, you have to do when we go through some problems. You say, thank you, Lord. They can surrender the problem to you. And then you start walking in faith. You say, praise God. I can wait till I see what you do with that problem. Praise God, this problem that's over my head is under your feet. And I thank you for dealing with it. And every day, just praise God. And all of a sudden, the pain of God grows, comes in your life and grows stronger and stronger and stronger. And all of a sudden, the problem is gone. You don't even know it left you. And a couple weeks later, you say, oh, what happened with that pain I had in my body? What happened with the problem I had? I forgot it was part of my life. Because you thank God for taking care of it. Number three, we have to have the right perspective about possessions. Luke 12, 15 says, then he said, be, be, beware. Beware. Pay attention. Go against every kind of greed. Life is a measure by how much you own. Life is not measured by how much you have. Life is measured on what you do for the kingdom. I've just told the scientists the best thing in life are not things. The best things in life are not things. Because things, what happen with things? They get old. Would you like to have a car or maybe a kitchen of 1950, a metal kitchen? No. We don't like old things unless they may have value. But we don't like old things. Even an old car that was expensive 30 years ago. Nobody wants an old plumber anymore. We don't want old things. So 
the possession that we have, God has entrusted us with what He has given us. And He let us have those things to show Him how are we dealing with those possessions. And you can never get in trouble. It's not wrong to have things. It's not wrong to have money. It's not wrong to have wealth. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. The wrong thing if you cherish all these things more than the Lord. If you love the money. I will never forget we had a brother in the church. And he decided he wanted to build his own business. And he didn't come to church. We didn't see him in church. He was always in church with his family. We didn't see him in church. Once in a while we heard he got into politics. And once in a while we heard he was doing this and that. And he started the painting business. Didn't come to church for years. One day we heard he passed away on a Sunday morning. Going to a Dunkin' Donuts by the coffee. Sitting in the van in a massive heart attack. I'm pretty sure if you would have been in church, you wouldn't have a massive heart attack. Because he would start working seven days. What did things bring to him? Nothing but a headache. But if what God has given and trusted us to certain things, possessions, if we deal them right, if we do it right, He'll give us more, amen? Because if He use for kingdom glory, He'll give us more. How many people, millions of people just pursuing, robbing people, cheating people, doing things wrong, and the more they pursue that, that, that money, the more their mind works in a scheming way. Just to find out somewhere down the road that they get caught and they end up in jail. My last one is the right perspective about possibilities. Matthew 19, 26 says, Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, whatever God does, we understand. Because God's ways are hard, much higher than our ways. Human, humanly speaking, it is impossible. Anything you deal with, anything that crosses your path, anything you will ever encounter, humanly, it's impossible. Hallelujah. But we know that God with God, everything. Can you say everything? Everything. No matter what the name of this everything, everything is possible. Hallelujah. Lord, it makes me rejoice because I can live a victorious life because my heavenly Father tells me all things are possible, amen. All things. So my mind needs to understand. Purely, maybe my thinking, maybe my thinking is not the answer. Maybe my mind doesn't understand. I, I can tell you many times when I encounter the way God brought the situations. Humanly, my mind did not comprehend how he did it. And to this day, I don't know how he did it. But I thank God that he says with God, everything is possible. Everything is what? Everything, amen. amen. Everything is everything. It's 100% everything. Hallelujah. What a word God has given us. That humanly is impossible, but with him all things are possible, amen. Oh, praise God. We don't, we, don't, we don't get to be it. We cannot be defeated because Jesus is living in us. With the past I look and I'll reach the best is yet to come. Don't give up. It doesn't matter what age you have. Don't give up. The best is yet to come as you turn with Jesus Christ. The best is yet to come. We, we don't go into something lesser. We don't go into something weaker. We don't go something into lower. No. We have gone higher, 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 higher with the Lord. Amen. Oh, some, something we want to be so high that the only way we can go higher is in the glory. Hallelujah. You're starting from low, but every time you go higher and higher and higher. And you know what? God lets you go through things because He's going to give you the experience to tell others, to let others know that you have gone through something. They have gone through They may don't know how to deal with it, but you knew how to deal with it. And you become a witness of Jesus Christ in that matter. 
Hallelujah. I thank God because he gave us his best. The best blessing that I received in my life is receiving Jesus Christ. And it didn't cost me a dime. Hallelujah. It didn't cost me a dime. Hallelujah. Anything else you have to pay for it. But salvation, Jesus, in all the glory and all his power is free. We all get praise, Jesus, every day. Thank you, Jesus. You my strength, you my blessing, you my blessing. Because of you, I have everything I need in my life. He is the source. That's why we keep our eyes focused on him. We go in the right direction. We go in the right direction. Sometimes when you're weak, sometimes when you go to things, you know, your brothers and sisters, you get to lean on in church. They'll come around you. They come around you to lift you up. Sometimes they come around you to lift you up physically, spiritually, emotionally. Because the Bible says we are one body. One body. If one is hurting the church, don't hurt him. If one rejoice, don't rejoice. What a blessed life we have with Jesus. Allow the Lord to just move you in a greater level. Allow the Lord to just advance you in the greatness of his presence. The latter ranks far greater. The latter, the latter part of your life is far greater. Don't come say, I left my life. Don't say, I, I, I left my life. I'm going to retire. No. You say, God, I thank you. You my strength. I know there's so much left in me. I can move and shake the kingdom of God on earth. Not according to my mind, but the spirit that's within you. Hallelujah. It just keeps on flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. Jesus is perfected. He's the strength. With him, you're number 10. You take Jesus out, you're number zero. With him, you're number 10. Let us stand. Father, we just thank you so much for your son. We thank you that you've given us your best. Your very best. And it didn't cost us anything, but it cost you everything. Lord Jesus, your life, you laid it down for us. You've given your best for us. And Lord, now it's your time that we give ourselves as the best unto you. And Holy Spirit, I pray for everyone in this place. They will ignite a new fire in our lives. Ignite a new fire in our lives. Let it be something we activate in our lives this day forward. It will take us into new levels. It will take us into new destinies. It will take us into new understandings. It will walk in the greater power we have ever walked before. Not for our sake, but for our cause, but for kingdom purpose. And Lord, I thank you that we can give ourselves down to you to move and shake the kingdom of God. So I surrender everyone unto you. Let your name be worshiped in our lives. Let's give the part of the Lord, I pray that you will touch, touch the hearts of the people that come there. Bring your people into the kingdom of God. Oh God, I thank you for what is coming. I thank you for what, what, what is in hand. I thank you for what you do in our lives. Everything has a purpose for King of Glory. Now I thank you that I can pray your blessing on each and every one in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Walk with me. Oh, yes, Lord. You always walk with us. Thank you for listening to this week's sermon. Please check our website for church updates and notes on upcoming sermons. Have a blessed week.